Good morning guys, welcome to today's video. I have been up and at it since early with so much energy again. Every once in a while this just happens to me. I just get a ton of energy and I can't stop myself from working. So when we moved into this house, essentially we just threw everything in and then worked on the goat on the horse barn to get it ready for our horses for winter. Um, you guys saw that I made like a little office, a little playroom in our office for the grandkids when they come, a room that we can all kind of utilize yesterday. And today I've worked on this dining room area. This is what I did. It looks similar. <laughs> okay, all I did was change one thing. <laughs> So I put the buffet over here, but it looks so much better because it's so bright in here. I didn't realize it was so dark in here because the buffet was over in that corner. It was over there in that corner, but it's so much brighter now. But just having moved this stuff, oh, just makes me so, feel so much better. The room just seems so much more balanced somehow. Just seems more like just having the extra light in here is phenomenal. These are the little sweaters that I got for our baby goats. They're like a blush kind of color. I just washed them and I'm going to take them down to the barn with me when we go. But I like it so much better. The house is just stealing so much more like a home instead of just some place where we just threw our stuff, which is exactly what we did. I also put this little gate up here. <laughs> For the time being until i get things figured out because um i don't want the dogs to go in there i'm worried about ellie with the carpet she comes in there with me but i just don't want her going in there like unsupervised sylvia is looking for a uh, duck egg i feel confident that she's gonna lay oh she's gonna lay any day i believe it so we've been feeling so they can't have a swimming pool right now because of the water it's frozen it's thawing though so for the winter, they right. have that purple bucket. So they brought down catnip for the cat, the chubby cat. Everybody's saying that our chat, cat is you chubby. And he definitely I'm looks chubby. Me. They eat more in the winter to try and keep themselves warm and it's been cold. Oh, he seems to like it. He's like, that's interesting. Speaking of cats, you guys, I have the horriblest, horriblest? The worst story ever to tell you. If you've been following us for any length of time, you'll know that we used to have a cat and its name was Dustpan. I got her when Gabby was like three and a half years old and she was, actually she was three and a half years old. She was, it was in the summer and, yeah, and Dustpan was this tawny little kitten. The lady said she was six weeks old. She was just wanted to get rid of them. And I tried to convince her to keep them until the babies were like a little bit older because it's just better. And she was like, no, first come, first serve. <laughs> Stop bucking me. That's why they call them bucks. This comes over. Did you lock that? Yeah. So anyways, we got this cute little cat and she was amazing. And she was really close to Gabby, but Gabby was just a little girl. But she was really, really close to Soph or to Nick. Nick is my son. He's he's grown up and moved out, but she was really close. He was like 10 years old or something when we got her and they were really, really close. He kind of took over her. Then Nick grew up and moved out and <laughs> and got like his own family and his own house and his own family. And life with Dustpan continued with us at our house and we moved um, out to a farm and we got an Ruby. So anyway, we got we ended up getting another dog. We got Ruby and Ruby is a, cha a cat chaser in the worst way and Dustin suddenly became unhappy. Get off of me. Ow! I think he wants to mate with me. <laughs> so anyway, anyways, I swear to God, he loves me. <laughs> so he has to keep him away from me while I video. So, oh my oh gosh. My so anyway, life got harder and harder with Dustpan. Her name was Dustpan because Nick suggested that we call her Dusty because she was a gray color. And Gabby was only three and a half and she didn't understand what Dusty meant at all. He's peeing so <laughs> she thought, oh, the only reference she had was our Dustpan, something that we used to sweep the floor. So she just started calling her Dustpan and then the name stuck. So her name was Dustpan. And 
life went on and she became increasingly unhappy. We tried to make the best of it because she was our cat and we loved her. So it ended up that when we moved to the farm, we made a really nice place upstairs on the second floor for her. We kept the dogs out of there and the dogs basically had the downstairs and, and Death Pan had the upstairs. And one day, a lot of you guys were here for this story, but one day Nick came home. She never ventured downstairs ever because of the dogs. They would just chase her. And one day, Nick came over and he sat down on the couch and she heard him and she started meowing like you have never heard. She braved the dogs, ran downstairs and ran right into his lap. And it like we were all just so shocked because even though she slept with me at night, she was never really attached to any of us like she was to him. Like it, she made it so clear that day that she loved him. And so he said like, I'm taking this cat home. And we said, yeah, you can take her home because it's so much better to be the only cat and to have free run of their whole place and not have to worry about the dogs. And just, she was getting older. She was like 12 or something at the time. No, she was probably 11 maybe at the time. So anyways, Nick took her home and she's 14 now and They've been talking about it the last few days that she's not doing well and it's come to the time when she has to be put down and I just was crying and crying this morning because I know how much he loves her and he even texted me and said like she's been my best friend for so long like and I believe it like she is his best friend so they have to put her down they have to euthanize her and it's just really sad they're having a new baby and I know it was really important for them that she live long enough to meet their new baby because she's their only pet. She's only the only pet they've ever had. And anyways, it just breaks my heart. But it just goes to show you that sometimes with animals, you are... All the goats are watching me. <laughs> they're, they're all just standing around chewing their cud and <laughs> listening to me. But anyway, I just want to share that with you guys because some of you guys have been invested in her story. But it also it goes to show you that sometimes your journey with an animal is just meant to be a part of their journey. Like, I believe that somehow she was with us, but she was really truly meant for Nick. Ow! And she has honestly lived the best last three years of her life. Ow! The goat! He just wants to play with me. He's like the sweetest boy, but he thinks that I can stand up to him like a goat. Dun da da da! Sam and Sophie, or Sam and Gabby came down and helped me get rid of that shelf. I'm gonna use it in another area. I pushed that one in the corner, and now our feed room. Actually, this is not our feed room. This is our tack room. I could make this our feed room. It might be bad. Oh, you guys! This is gonna be our feed room for sure. I love this wall here. I love that as a horse barn, you could hang all your saddles and stuff on it. Like that's cool. But I just had to stop. So I wanted to keep this like as a tack room and keep like nice things in it. And so when we moved here, I decided to make this little tiny area right here, our feed room, just because it was, it was like a little room that I could do something with and not use up all the space in our tack room. But what if I moved all of my feed stuff into the tack room, moved it into there, the fridge is in there, the water's in there, everything's in there. I could just make that into my little my little feed room. And then this could be a stall for one of the animals that we are getting. So if you saw the video, I don't know, I think it's already out, but I made a video of the animals that we're gonna be getting. If you saw that video, you'll know what animals we're getting. Um, this would make such a perfect stall for one of those animals. So he wants quails. I don't think we can put quails in here though, because- I know. You should like figure out what to do for the quails yourself. If you want them so badly, you should like figure out. I just want like a few, like 20. <laughs> They're so tiny. So like 20 is like, like eggs too. one's not even right, a chicken size. Even... Okay, just wait. But anyways, this is like such a perfect spot. I can't wait to make this. I'm gonna do this. This is something I'm gonna probably do this week, even though we're not getting the animal until the spring. Yeah, now that that one shelf is out of here, I can keep everything together in one area. And actually, I could even put shelves up on that wall. I'm excited. Last summer, it was like we moved in. We moved in in July, at the beginning of July. So like the 5th or something. So last year we moved in in July. We had such little time to get things organized for the animals 
that we just moved everything in. It took us a move to, it took us a month to move in, so that took us till August. We were working on stuff, making it good for the horses to come over. And it was so much work. It was almost like we didn't get time to like really do anything. We just were like surviving. We were just moving. We were just putting everything in here so that it would work out. But now, this will be the first real summer that we get to actually move here, like live in here and like fix things up the way we want. So last time we were just like getting things in and moving and this year we're gonna actually get to like rearrange things and make them the way that we want and build things. I literally can never find my stuff. So if he's like, where's your shovel? I don't know, I lose them all the time. I keep losing everything. Uh -huh. Sophie's worried about the duck and the goose. She wants them to have their pool back. Oh, currently get out. Yeah, they're trying, currently they're trying to break free. <laughs> they're drinking the water outside, outside their little area. Because we definitely don't have two clean buckets of water for them. Yeah, it's not like we have two clean buckets of water. We have two buckets of water in here for them. One that they can swim in. But Leo's too big to swim in that. I know. Well, Sophie, let's just wait and let Mother Nature handle it for us. It's coming out. <laughs> I just feel like it's Ow. not. I'm you want to try and, and hold, lift it together? Oh, we're never lifting Why that. Why would we get a new pool? Because the same thing is going to happen, you silly. We actually do have another pool, but it's not going to be any different. Well, it's not going to be frozen. Another reason that that Moving my feed room into that room is because it has a door on it, like an actual door that closes. And so when the goats are running wild in there, they can't jump through it and get into my feed. I know, poor little duck, you poor little goose. We are gonna go and say a goodbye to Dustpan and love on her and kiss on her and, oops, thank you, and say goodbye before her appointment tomorrow. It's basically our last chance to say goodbye to someone that we love. And I love her and I feel sad for her and I feel sad, but I feel so sad for my son. Like, he loves that cat so, 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 so much. It's like they're connected. But anyway, I think we're gonna end today's video. I'm sorry if it's a bit short. I don't know if it is. Um, we're just gonna go as a family and say goodbye. Don't you know the 